Steve has uh, an impressive resume, uh, which he may want to highlight, but I'm telling you, he's been in every facet of the food business that I'm aware of, from co-ops to major department stores, from procuring food for co-ops and organic food and so on. And he is currently the market director of uh, TNC. Um, when I got up, Steve, when I got a promotion to be sales manager, my mother asked me, well, what does a sales manager actually do? <laughs> and I had to tell her, I did tell her, well, we nag people. <laughs> now I suspect that's not the sum and substance of your, uh, your position, but at any rate, welcome. And uh, we're glad to have you on board. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I try not to nag too much. <laughs> so, Want to keep people smiling. So. Go on mute. Still there? Yes, we're all just muted. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, Robert, I don't know how you want to proceed. Uh, you gave me a list of questions. I can certainly just run down that. Um, uh, kind of fill you in a little bit. Um, you know, certainly the food supply chain has been challenging, as you all uh, have recognized, if you've been shopping in the market at all. Um, we got hit a couple of times uh, early on uh, pretty dramatically, um, and it continues to be an ongoing challenge. We, we've been, uh, you know, kind of working from every direction, trying to make sure that we're fulfilling uh, as much product as we can. So, um, but there's still uh, still ongoing shortages and suppliers and manufacturers have backed away in, in, in a lot of commodities, uh, minimizing the number of SKUs that they're offering, um, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, it continues to be, continues to be a challenge. Um, you know, staples like paper, cleaning supplies, pantry supplies continue to be challenging. Rice, flour, those sorts of things. Um, some beans, soups, uh, those sorts of things are, are um, um, challenging for us to get. Right now, just, just so you have an idea, we order everything in the market that we possibly can. And uh, our fulfillment rate right now is probably around 60%. So we get about 60% of what we order um, on every order. We order six days a week from two different suppliers. So, um, and that's, uh, the 60% is, is um, center store stuff. So more commodity kinds of things. Uh, we've had much better luck with our perimeter departments, uh, such as produce. Um, but uh, meat has also been a challenge um, with the, you know, with the closures of a lot of the meat packing plants across the country. It's put a lot of pressure um, on that category. Um, luckily, we buy from uh, local purveyors and natural and organic. And so those have been impacted a lot less than uh, you might find at a, at a mainstream. Uh, grocery store. So uh, the other thing that's going on with the supply chain is allocation. So um, what we found is we're kind of the little, the little guy on the block relative to the Safeways of the world and the Kroger's and QFC's and that sort of thing. And uh, the Walmart's and um, Costco's. And so uh, the manufacturers have redirected a lot of their products to fulfill their larger clients, which also puts pressure on um, our ability to resource and, and get products. So there's a lot of a lot of uh, mitigating factors that are going on that makes it difficult for us to procure product. Um, one of the but what we've done, some of the things that we've done to kind of uh, countervent that is um, our, we're buying things that out, outside of the norm of what we would normally buy. So 
Um, you may occasionally see some off brands on our shelves and that sort of thing. Um, so we're trying to fill in where we can if we know we can get the product. So um, we're picking up other items that we typically might not normally carry. Um, yeah. There's, um, you know, any, any kind of a um, processing plant, um, those sorts of things have been impacted by COVID-19 pretty dramatically, as I'm sure you've seen in the news. Um, and so that trickles down to affects us. And um, so seafood, you know, occasionally seafood's been a challenge. Poultry has been a challenge. It was a real challenge early on. It's gotten better um, as people are learning how to kind of cope with their workforce and, uh, you know, reallocate their workforce so that they can get the production uh, going. So, yeah. Is that a good start? That's, Steve, that's a great start. Thank you very much. Um, Any questions relative to that? Anybody? Well, I have one uh, to start off. Tell us about uh, the progress or, or lack thereof with regard to in-house shopping for clients. Someone would call up and say, could you shop for me? How's that, how is that working? So uh, we... We have launched a uh, shop at townandcountrymarkets.com, which is our online shopping service. Um, it's going splendid. Um, we have a lot of people using it. Um, it's pretty smooth operation. We continue to add different, uh, more, more and more items on the site, I think. But I think we already have, gosh, 18,000 items on there or something like that. So. Uh, we have a pretty robust, um, pretty robust offering. Um, yeah, and it's going smooth. It's it's once you kind of get used to getting the login and get your account set up, which is fairly easy, um, then it's pretty smooth sailing after that. So, and after ordering and uh, presumably being uh, paid for, uh, do we just drive up to the store and? Uh and someone brings the bags out, or how does that work? Yeah, so we offer two different services. One is um, curbside pickup, so through our lower level market meals driveway. Um, so what you'll do when you, when you order online is that you'll pick a time slot that you wanna pick it up. Um, we will have it ready, uh, say it's 10 o'clock, we will have it ready for you by 10 o'clock. Um, you swing by, uh, swing through, um, there's a button downstairs that you can push, although we have people pretty alert as to when somebody drives up. And uh, and then we'll just load that into your car. It's, it's a, kind of a no-touch kind of service. So most people just, you know, um, hit the latch on their trunk and wave goodbye as they go drive away. So it's pretty slick. So, uh, And then the other thing is we're working with Pat Westy here on the island. Um, they're not only doing deliveries here on the island, but they're also doing deliveries um, over in the Shoreline Ballard area for us as well. So, um, and they have been absolutely awesome. Um, they're, they're, they share a lot of kind of the values that TNC does um, as far as customer service and, and um, you know, all of their trucks are eco-friendly, electric, um, so they share a lot of the kind of the similar core values that we do. So it's been a great partnership thus far. Um, we've expanded the number of delivery slots. Originally, we were delivering two different times of the day, one on the south end of the island, one on the north end of the island. Um, a one o'clock delivery window and a four o'clock delivery window somewhere in there. Uh, now we've started... Um, Plotting deliveries every um, couple of hours, so you can go in there and pick a delivery time that you want it delivered. And, and Pack Westy will swing by here and pick up your order and deliver it to you. So, um, yeah, going well. It's a, there's a ten dollar delivery flat delivery fee for them, um, plus the opportunity to give those drivers a tip. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And the name of that company again is Pac, Pac Westy. Yeah. Okay. How about uh, how about the hours for uh, special hours for seniors? Do you yeah. find the traffic or not? What's that? So we've seen, uh, you know, initially um, uh, it the senior hours was really uh, popular, almost to the point where it felt uncomfortable because we had so many people coming in. Like, wait, wait, this is not what we we're trying to accomplish here. <laughs> so, um, so it's mellowed a lot. Um, we've just uh, we just had a, a conference call um, at the uh, end of last week about re-emphasizing the senior hours and ensuring that we don't have a bunch of uh, either non-seniors or non-immune compromised folks coming in. So um, we're on we're on the lookout for that and alert for that to just make sure that we create the space for folks to feel comfortable. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty, um, the mornings are pretty mellow during those senior hours. So yeah, it would be a good time to shop. Yeah. I what see your, really? what's that? What hours are the senior shopping hours? Oh, so they're uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So. Any other questions out there in the, uh, in the audience? I don't have a question. I don't yep. have a question. I would like to say that um, since the lockdown in March, before TNC got online for ordering, I ordered groceries and had them delivered, and it was great. And now that they've got the online ordering and I can swing by, I've used that totally, and it has just been really awesome. I've gotten, you know, great fruit and vegetables and the meat. I, I There's no absolutely no complaints from me. I just, it's really great. So if I order once a week, then I can do a pickup. I can, you know, stop by, maybe take a quick walk around Winslow uh, and that's kind of my day out. But I have been absolutely grateful for that online shopping and their drive through delivery. It's been absolutely excellent for me. And thank you so much for doing that. Yeah, we, we I think our, our service is a bit unique in the fact that our staff uh, shops your orders and uh, they kind of think about it the same as if they were um, kind of helping you walk through the market. Um, they, they really take it from that perspective. You know, when they go to pick out fruit or vegetables, they're looking for the best ones they can find, you know. Um, so they, they really take it to heart. And, what we've wanted to do online as much as possible, and it's not entirely impossible, is to really emulate the in-store experience to the online experience. So you're getting just as good a service and quality as you would if you were shopping yourself in the market. So uh, that's our goal. Okay. Steve, are you uh, utilizing your 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 uh, growing area down uh, here on the on the island uh, to grow produce and sell produce? Uh, I'm, I've always been curious about that. I see a lot of activity over there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we uh, we buy, we get produce from Middlefield Farms. Um, they, what whatever's available, we carry in the market um, uh, on our produce shelves, and it's really nice stuff. Um, you know, great, great quality, and yeah, it's, it's good, and I, I'm fairly new to that. Um, so I've been in this. I've been at the market since November. So this is kind of my first uh, spring and summer uh, with TNC over here on the island. So, um, but it's great to partner with them and and uh, and see the quality of produce that, that comes out of those fields. So it's awesome. Yeah. Hi, this is Christina. Uh, Steve. Um, I was just sort of curious with all of this ramping up and you had to really create services. Are there any particular services that TNC has said, you know what, we're going to keep this after everything gets back to normal? 
because it's working well? Um, with regards to what are you thinking about? Oh, I don't know. Um, the I, uh, Maybe I misunderstood the delivery service, the, the scheduled pickup, any of the new things that you put in place since COVID started that you're going, this is actually a, a good service and we're going to continue. Yeah, I mean, we are definitely, uh, the online uh, service is definitely part of our business model going forward. Um, and we're going to continue to enhance that and add additional things. We're already talking about holiday orders and how do we handle that, you know, turkeys and those sorts of things. So um, we're thinking out, you know, several months ahead of, of where we want to be. So, yeah, we're going to continue to do that. We, we're, you know, slowly ramping up how many orders that we process in a day. And so I think uh, our goal this month is to get up to 70 orders a day um for august and so um yeah we'll continue to add, add add different product lines you know it's this whole uh since the COVID struck um if you've shopped in the market at all you've noticed that we've you know we've had to um kind of shut down the food bars and those sorts of things and uh some of the services like that uh, we're in continue kind of conversation about, okay, so what's the new normal going to look like, right? I mean, and how long is this going to go on? And uh, what is bulk foods going to look like? We're currently, we're testing a new uh, gravity feed bulk food system over in our possible store, which we will probably adopt uh, to get away from the scoop bins, just so uh, there's less touch points um, as far as contamination and that sort of thing goes. So um, we're looking, you know, we're kind of looking at what the future is going to be and, and trying to stay on that cutting edge as much as we can and figure out where we're going to be. So um, I think the food bars going forward is probably going to change. I'm not sure how, um, but uh, I think, I think people are pretty skeptical, right? You know, rightly so about, um, who's touching those ladles and those spoons and um, do I want to touch them after they've touched them and those, those kinds of things. So, you know, our, our, our charge, it was interesting early on um, in the COVID experience, uh, Bill Weimer, our CEO, um, got on a conference call with all of us and said, um, uh, said something to the effect of, you know, our business model has changed. It's now about keeping people safe. And so that's been our entire focus um, for the last six months is keeping our staff safe and keeping our customers safe. And, uh, and I would imagine that uh, a lot of that's going to continue. Uh, it's really, really heightened our awareness of, uh, you know, what that means and what kind of protocols we've put on, uh, I think right now we're allocating about 300 hours a week to sanitation uh, within the market. Um, so not only the shopping carts and the hand baskets, but the, you know, the handles on the frozen food doors and the dairy doors and those sorts of things. So, um, and we don't see that going away anytime soon. So, and I'm sure some of those protocols will stay in place um, as we go forward. So, yeah. Steve, how about prices? Uh, what prices have risen the most because of COVID? And what do you anticipate uh, prices in any area to, to go going forward, particularly as we get into the holiday season? Yeah, so, um, you know, with supply and demand um, costs, certainly some costs have certainly have risen. Um, but um, I would say within the last month, maybe a couple of months, things have started to level out. So they're pretty stable. Um, you know, we're always looking for, and our buyers are really always looking for good values to be able to pass along. So um, we internally have not changed our pricing structure at all. Uh, it's the same as it's always been. Um, 
and we're trying to figure out ways to introduce some different programs to add value. Um, you know, as you know, TNC is um, so dedicated to the community and supporting the community and very sensitive to the fact that, you know, there's there are people out there that are hurting and they're, uh, um, are out of work and can't, you know, afford. So, so we're trying to come up with different programs where we can pass some of those savings along. So um, one of the most recent things we started was called Big Bonus Buys, where uh, in conversations with vendors, we come up with some items that they um, you know, that they want to release some good low costs on, and we pass those along. So um, we're continually looking for those those types of things. You know, probably one category that I, I think went up in price that um, kind of stayed there a little bit is the red is red meat um, beef, um, and I think that's because of the plant closures and the and the struggles that they've had as far as supply goes. Um, but, you know, other categories of, um, you know, they've leveled out and, and there isn't, we're not seeing a whole lot of price increases um, coming our way right now. So one of the thing, you know, a lot of the manufacturers have um, kind of minimized their operations. So, you know, paper, we're getting, you know, we might get one or two different kinds of toilet paper, maybe. And so they're just not producing what they used to produce. They've they've done what they can do to lower their um, you know lower their cost to market as well. So I've got a question about packaging. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. I've got a question about packaging. Um, and, you know, it's it's real tough right now um, for those of us who are concerned about not taking home too much plastic. And certainly you've been the place to shop um, because of all your bulk foods. And, you know, I've shopped for years with my own jars and that kind of stuff that's now not possible. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed is so much now coming in those um, hard shell plastic containers. Right. You know, and is there any talk about going back, particularly in terms of bakery items, the way things used to be done with a cardboard box with lots of... Um, side and top panels where you can see in. I know people are all concerned about seeing into things, um, but has there been any talk about that? I, I bought, for instance, a birthday cake and it was in this huge plastic bubble that was, you know, sort of off-putting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it, um, how much plastic and, and non-recyclables that we encounter in our business is always top of mind, I think, for town and country. Um, you know, unfortunately, we've had to err on the side of safety where we're packaging a lot of stuff that we normally would package. Um, and, you know, hopefully someday we can go back to, um, you know, some kind of a uh, self-service thing where you're not you're not using packaging at all. So, um, yeah, there's not a there's not a particular plan in place. I think uh, to answer your question directly, to um, redirect um, redirect that um, things that are in plastic into something else. Um, and I think our focus has just been on um, kind of trying to maintain the quality of the product and not have it be yeah well just know that there's a lot of us who dream of the day that all we ever have to do is either put things in our compost pile or very easily and obvious uh recycling means and you know i, ju I just was reading the figure that um plastic in our oceans is going to quadruple 
um, in the next 20 years. And it just, you know, it's just said. And also, I have another question. How is Tony doing? Tony D'Onofrio. And when do you think he might come be back? Uh, he's doing well. And I think uh, the last I heard is he was kind of targeting towards the end of the month. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, would you would you send him our best wishes? He is uh, such a gem of a person and so accessible to us. He is, yes, and I will definitely send him uh, your thoughts. Great. Yeah, if, if uh, I mean he's a he's such a great person to have on our team as far as um, environmental awareness and and uh, pushing that envelope. So um, yeah, it would be good to have him back. Yeah. Yep. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Steve, any suggestions about uh, how we can change our buying habits to uh, more closely align with the supply and demand out there? Well, a couple of thoughts. I, I wrote down a couple of thoughts about that. And, you know, one is um, just be conscious of the fact that, you know, you may not be able to get that brand that you always got before, right? Um, that you're able to purchase, um, you know, like with our online shopping, if you shop online, um, you know, indicate that substitutions are acceptable kind of thing. Uh, and our shoppers will try to substitute something as close to that item as you can, um, you know, except for the fact of like, we wouldn't substitute non-organic for organic and that sort of thing. Um, but that's one thing, because uh, we are having to, um, you know, we are limited on some of the items and some of the commodities of what kind of brands we're getting. So um, flexibility around that going forward um, is probably going to be a plus. Um, you know, Another thing I would say is, you know, just buying fresh, which you probably already do anyway, but buy fresh seasonal items that are in stock. Normally they are, you know, like the berries we get in and that sort of thing. They're really generally a very good value. And um, so I think kind of focusing in on that would be good. Um, and then supply seems to be leveling off. And so, um, you know, we're kind of in a um, level pattern now. So I think originally a lot of people were uh, kind of panic buying and filling up their uh, pantries and you know, you'd walk into the market and you'd see, you know, there's no flour on the shelf and there's none of this on the shelf. So things have leveled out. And so I would say as far as buying habits go, uh, at least at this point, you can anticipate that there is going to be a constant flow of, of most commodities in the market. So you don't have to, you know, clear the shelf off and that sort of thing um, necessarily. Um, yeah, it, uh, what else would I say? I think that's probably about it in that. Nothing in health in particular. Anyone else out there with questions or thoughts or ideas or even suggestions? <laughs> Steve, I just want to thank you for the precautions that you've taken. Um, you, you know, sometimes we get directionally confused. We're, we're shopping so much, we forget to see the arrows, but you've done such a great job hanging them and putting them on the floor. I really appreciate that. But I also want to, um, Thank you so much for I, the staff there. I mean, I just love the checkers and the baggers and, and the coffee, you know, Denise and oh Shelly. And I just go on, you know, I've, I've made friends there. It's the first time in my life I've made friends with people that work at the grocery store. And it, it's just what a community and, and, and what a fabulous store. And I just want to thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we, we have a just a wonderful team of people here and uh, they care so much and yeah. care about each other and care about all of you. And, um, you know, it's, it just warms my heart every day I come to work, yeah. uh, to work with such a great group of people. So, yeah. 
Uh, and you know, they've it's been a tough time for them. I, mean, I know it has. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, um, it's anxiety. You know, it's full of anxiety and um, having to adapt. You know, week in and week out, we're we're kind of adapting to something else. Every mm -hmm. week. Um, but they've remained flexible, and you know, I love that most everybody keeps a smile on their face, and they they're. You know, they're appreciative to be here. So under their mask, they keep a smile. You can yeah, smile exactly. with their eyes, Steve. <laughs> they do. And, and uh, yeah, and and Pete. You know, I'm always joking with Pete. I've been po joking with Pete for years. And we had a mutual friend that died here on the island. She's pretty well known, and and uh, we both shed a few tears over our mutual friend. You know, it's like, what other grocery store do you do that in? I mean, just amazing. So, thank you. I feel very blessed to be here. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. I couldn't echo Karen any more than that. Uh, absolutely beautifully put, Karen. Um, I would add, the only thing I can add and would add would be the wonderful young people that are taking the carts out in the um, as I exit or enter, actually, mostly when I exit, and how wonderful they are. And they won't let me go any further then. <laughs> They're very good. They they know their job and they do a wonderful job. And they, they're smiling all the way through it, too. So, yeah, indeed. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Yeah, we've had, a, we've had the opportunity to hire um, quite a number of temporary workers um, throughout this process. And uh, it, it's given them a good opportunity to have some income and and then several of them quite a few of them actually have rolled over into full-time employees so they started here temporarily and uh, realized that the restaurant business that they were in is not going to reopen and so they decided to stay on so we've been very fortunate to get some great people yeah. well those comments and uh can i can i gush a little myself of course Okay, we've lived all over the country, um, and I must admit, TNC is is the gem of all grocery stores, just in terms of the variety. And as people have already said, your staff, it's like, uh, you know, and, and I compare it to our other local grocery store and the difference. To me, I enjoy shopping at TNC, and I'm a non-shopper. I mean, I, oh God, I get to go to TNC. I mean, that's weird, but it's true. And as other people said, you get to know people and <clears throat> it's just a well-run, lovely grocery store. So if you're relatively new to TNC, boy, did you make the correct uh, decision to join them as you, I'm sure, already know, so. Yeah, I was lucky to be, so. I was lucky to be kind of adopted into the company. I I was managing a store, our Lakemont store over in Bellevue for a, for a different owner um, when TNC purchased that market. And so um, I was lucky enough to be adopted into the family, which was absolutely wonderful. And I've worked uh, in uh, uh, two other central markets over on the other side, Mill Creek and uh, Shoreline, so before coming here. so. Uh, it's just a great place to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in today. Um, hearing no further questions, you can interrupt if you'd like, or you still have one. But uh, Steve, want to make sure that we thank you so much for uh, for allowing us to pepper you with questions and to hear the story of of uh, TNC and what you all are doing. And uh, and now there's another person at TNC that we can say. Hi, too. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So I had a question for the group. I'm just curious: is there is there anything that you? A um, couple of questions. A couple of things have come up, but is there anything that uh, you feel we can be doing to to better serve you, uh, especially during this time? So we're uh, we're all ears. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing comes directly to mind. You've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, let's see, what else was I going to say? 
Okay, folks. I think I want to, one thing that I just kind of wanted to close with is, um, and I was talking to Susan Allen about this and about being on this call and um, all of us just want to extend our deepest gratitude to this community. Um, you know, we feel like we're all in this together and um, no, we're not, we're not just a grocery store. We're, we're part of the same big family here. And uh, so we're so grateful and appreciate the support and patience um, and an understanding that all of you have given us during this time. Um, we've, we've done our darndest to try to navigate it as best we can. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, just we really appreciate it. So, yeah. Great. Thank you again. Again, thank you. folks, thank you for joining in. Uh, Sheila, you got everything you need? Yes, sir. You'll be 